Hey guys, Davey here from phonebuff.com. In this video I want to talk about how the Galaxy S lineup has changed over the years, starting with the original Galaxy S to the Galaxy S2 and now the Galaxy S3. Just want to talk about the hardware a little and also the software. So on the left with the Galaxy S, the original, it's actually the T-Mobile variant, uh, the US version. It has a 4 inch screen going diagonally. It was 800 by 480 in resolution, Super AMOLED of course. You have the four capacitive touch buttons at the bottom. And uh, on the back, you have a 5 megapixel camera. This particular variant didn't have a front facing camera, but for the ones that did, it was a VGA camera. The Galaxy S2, uh, in this case, Sprint's Epic 4G Touch variant, had a bigger screen, as you can see. It's uh, noticeably bigger at 4.5 inches. Uh, some variants were 4.3 inches, but this guy was 800 by 480, so the same resolution. But the difference was this guy is Super AMOLED Plus, so the sub pixel layout is a little bit different. It, there weren't shared sub pixels giving you a little bit better quality than you'd get over here. And uh, you can see you have the same four capacitive touch buttons as you did on the uh, original Galaxy S uh, for the US version. Again, the international version had a physical home button with the uh, capacitive buttons on the sides. And uh, the back has a eight megapixel camera. And on the front, you actually have a two megapixel front facing shooter on this guy. So pretty uh, impressive uh, you know, improvement from the original. And then now we have the Galaxy S3, which uh, obviously, you know, from the screen department, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. This is a 4.8 inch display, but the difference between the this and the last two is the resolution has finally been kicked up to 1280 by 720. Now, the screen type is Super AMOLED like it is on the original Galaxy S, so it's not Super AMOLED Plus, but, you know, with the higher resolution, it really does make up for that shared sub-pixel layout, so definitely, obviously, the better screen is on the Galaxy S3. Now, what's interesting is on the US versions, on the bottom, you have only two capacitive touch buttons, kind of like the international versions were for the S1 and S2, with the physical home button here at the center. And uh, on the back, you have an eight megapixel camera, similar to the one found on the Galaxy S2. So not that big of a increase or a improvement from the Galaxy S2. On the uh, front, the front facing camera is 1.9 megapixels, basically around the same as it was on the Galaxy S2 again. Um, obviously, the quality difference can be a little bit different because there are different lenses, but uh, as far as the megapixel count, they're pretty much the same. Let's go ahead and compare the phones side by side. You can see all three had the power button at the right. Obviously, the spacing is a little bit different, but for the most part, you know, close to the right thumb so you could turn on the screen easily. At the top, all three of them had the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, over here on the Galaxy S1 and S2, Galaxy S3, they flipped it over to this side. The charging port is actually at the top for the S1, um, where on the S2 and S3, they're at the bottom. And uh, on the left side, you have the volume rocker for all three versions. And uh, you can kind of see the thickness, you know, pretty much it's gotten thinner over the years. There wasn't dram a dramatic difference between the S1 and the S2. Uh, however, the S3 is noticeably thinner than both of these guys. And obviously, you know, with it being this much bigger, that's a definitely a good thing because it does make it much more pocketable. So that's the uh, you know outside look at it. The, on the inside, you had a one gigahertz processor on the uh, original Galaxy S, and this is for the international version and you know the version that came in the states. It was a one gigahertz processor. Uh, it's a hummingbird processor. On the S2, you had a, a little bit of differences. Now the international version had the Exynos 1.2 gigahertz processor, which actually the Sprint version did as well. But some US variants had the Qualcomm Snapdragon S3 processor clocked that a little bit higher at 1.5 gigahertz. So that's the difference there. The S3 has, all US versions have the uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor at 1.5 gigahertz, but the international version had a uh, the uh, Equinos processor like this guy, but it was uh, a quad core obviously at 1.4 gigahertz. So a little bit you know slower frequency, but of course you have four cores. Major difference between the uh, Galaxy S3 in the US and the international version is this guy has two gigabytes of RAM. This guy has one gigabyte of RAM and this guy only has 512. So basically, if you think about it, as far as the US versions, the RAM has doubled every single time uh, with every new uh, Galaxy S. So pretty uh, impressive. I mean, if you really think about it, you know, doubling the RAM every single time and the processors, you know, not necessarily doubled uh, from here to here, it was doubled, but from here to here, wasn't really double, but definitely a dramatic increase or improvement um, on the S3. You know, I do like it a lot, and considering it is pushing a high resolution, resolution screen, definitely needed that processing power. But anyways, uh, that's pretty much it for the hardware. Let's go ahead and talk about the software, see how TouchWiz has actually changed. TouchWiz on the original Galaxy S, you know, was very simple. You had the uh, black background over here. You could scroll to the right and uh, left 
once you scroll all the way to the right you're pretty much stuck and uh, you have three apps right here that you can customize got the notification bar just four little toggles that you could turn on and off and uh, just the all gray notification shade so that's pretty much it when you press the menu you had you know these typical little options and go into the settings and it looks like this so that's the way the TouchWiz looked on the Galaxy S, the original. On the Galaxy S2, TouchWiz looks a little bit different. The uh, background is now clear, so you could actually scroll through your apps and uh, not have to look at a back background. They also got rid of the little, uh, the applications used to have a little square border around them, like over here. All the little apps had square borders. They got rid of them over here, which I definitely prefer because it looks a lot cleaner. And uh, now you have the scrolling motion, which you can scroll like that. I'm not sure if this one had it. Yeah, I don't think it did, but so you have that scrolling motion with TouchWiz 4.0. Now when you press menu, obviously with having ice cream sandwich, it looks like this instead of the little six icons over here. So it definitely looks a lot cleaner. The notification bar looks a little bit better. You have more toggles. Now you have five toggles instead of just four like you did over here. And, uh, you know, makes it a little bit easier to access what you're looking for. And on the S3, you know, it's probably my, obviously my favorite version of, of uh, TouchWiz. Now on the app dock you have four apps that are customizable versus three and that's thanks to the higher resolution screen. The notification bar, you've got, not only do you have five toggles right here, but you know you can actually scroll over and you have an extra four. So you have nine total toggles that you can turn on and off. Much more control at your hands. You can press the setting button here to go straight to the settings course as an ICS type uh, option. The app drawer looks pretty much the same. Uh, it, it is see-through, but now it's you can scroll all the way through instead of getting stuck at the end. Uh, widgets are available right here as well. So, you know, it follows kind of the theme of Ice Cream Sandwich, but with Samsung's Touch with Touch on top of it. So, that's pretty much how it looks. You know, the settings here. Obviously, there's a lot of changes, you know, that happened in the software versions over here. Just basic software. You have, they introduced motion controls on the Galaxy S2, and uh, they took it to the next level with the Galaxy S3 with Features like Smart Stay, where the camcorder or the camera on the front detects your eyes to see, you know, whether or not you're looking at it to determine whether or not to turn off the screen, um, and a whole bunch of other features. But anyway, I just wanted to do a quick, you know, talk about. It. I mean, you know, it's it's really nice to be able to look back at technology and see how it's progressed over time. Kind of gives you an idea as far as I know it's kind of early, but what the you know next Galaxy S will look like, the S4. You know, what kind of pro we'll probably have see a quad core processor for sure. And, uh, you know, who, who knows how much RAM they'll put in and what kind of screens we'll see. But anyway, just wanted to do this quick video for all you, you know, Android fans like me. Um, all you Galaxy S fans like me. Um, you know, I've owned every single one of them since they've come out and definitely have loved them and, you know, definitely love the improvements. I feel like Samsung really, you know, is the flagship uh, manufacturer for uh, Android because not only do they make the Nexus phones, but their Galaxy S lineup is the best-selling Android phones out. So anyway... That's it for me in this video. If you found it, you know, helpful or if you liked it, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.